Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day here in the end times at Bugs in a Jar Farm where with the exception of one day over the next 10 days, this is supposed to be the weather forecast for the Finger Lakes of New York or September 2024 is rolling out to be the most spectacularly gorgeous month possibly of my life and so uh, it is now Thursday September 5th and uh, I am uh, finally getting to relax after the the crazy summer as an Airbnb host and I am just sitting here on my ass today uh, trying to force myself not to go to work. Uh, so I'm sitting here on the mainstream media and I do not believe it. You know, I did this rant which uh, a couple of nights ago on my review of this documentary called The Truth Illusion, which actually even ended up over there. I guess that little eco pussy over there at Collapse Chronicles even stole it and put it on his channel. But uh, I am thrilled to say uh, that rant uh, has finally gotten the mainstream media attention that Hambone Little Tail has been looking for. And here we uh, are in the New Republic. Several alert uh, readers have sent me this article uh, saying, Hambone, you have hit the big time. You are in the New Republic. Uh, so what does the New Republic have to say about Hambone Little Tail's mental state? Finally, top journo, a journo, J-O-U-R-N-O, top journo erupts at media for ignoring Hambone Little Tail's mental state. Yes, for months, media critics have insisted that Hambone Little Tail's mental unfitness should be treated as a big and important news story in and of itself. Uh, Little Tail's visible incoherence, cognitive impairment, inability to cogently discuss the simplest public matters and increasingly strange flights of fantasy deserve treatment. Yes. This argument has never received an even remotely serious hearing from newsroom leaders at big media organizations, but it might have just become a bit harder to ignore now that a well-respected veteran journalist, oh, a, a journo, is a well-respected veteran journalist, has, in a moment of striking candor, called out his colleagues for failing to take Hambone Little Tail's mental state seriously as a story in its own right. So this is this fellow I've actually heard of before. I, I need to get back to the, I need to go check out the Morning Joe uh, podcast from yesterday. This is journalist Mike Barnacle. I love that name, Barnacle. Mike Barnacle, who served as a longtime columnist for the Boston Globe and other newspapers, uh, speaking on Morning Joe yesterday, quote, talking about Ham on Little Tail's mental state, quote, we have a damaged 
delusional old man. <clears throat> uh, blah, blah, blah. We have a damaged, delusional old man. Do you think so? Who frequently says deranged things in public that you would not repeat on American television or in front of your own children. How did we get here? Then he pointed his finger at media colleagues. Hambone Littletail can say whatever crazy shit he wants to say about Corona Panic, Corona Pussies, Space Alien Abductions, the Green New Deal, Barnacle said. <clears throat> he noted that such things are not really covered as a window in who the man Hambone Littletail is or a sign that he is out of his mind. Ah, uh, the judgment that Hambone Littletail is out of his mind might strike some newsroom citizens as loaded opinionated language. Yes. And surely some of them would reject Barnacle's critique by noting that they do not cover Littletail's wild-eyed utterances. Yes, but we should pause to appreciate Barnacle's deeper underlying point here. It is that merely covering each of Littletail's hallucinatory, hallucinatory claims as news items even if that includes aggressively fact-checking them, does not do justice to the much bigger story that is unfolding right at the end of all of our noses. Let's try to state what should be obvious. Hambone Littletail's mental fitness deserves sustained journalistic scrutiny as a standalone topic with its own intrinsic importance and newsworthiness. Real journalistic resources should be put into meaningfully covering it from multiple angles. As often happens with other big national stories of great consequences, is this happening right now in any meaningful sense? Is there even a debate going on in America's top newsrooms about whether it should be happening right now? There you go. Now, he does, you know, point out that uh, there have been a few attempts to look at uh, Hambone little tales declining mental state in the national press some isolated examples the new york times had a good piece recently that focused on hambone little tales use of vulgar language describing vice president kamala harris as a clueless fucking moron bitch fascist. Uh, but what's really at issue here is whether the media as an institution and in a comprehensive sense is treating Hambone Littletail's mental state as an overarching and critically important factor. Even if some of Ham on Little Tail's whacked out statements do get covered, many do not. Yes.
then they're talking about uh, I anyway talking about Hambone going off on trannies. Uh, Hambone little tail going off on trannies. Uh, why don't things like Hambone Little Tail's obvious cognitive impairment, his frequently inability to speak and think coherently, his resolute refusal to acquire minimal baseline knowledge on many consequential issues, his tendency to invent things on the fly that are wildly disconnected from reality, his intense narcissism, his deliberate lying and bigotry and misogyny, to name just a few of his traits, also go to his core mental and character Terological capacity to do his job. Yes. And uh, okay. To illustrate all this, uh, he looks at some headlines. Uh, reading these headlines, you can see how journalists might spend much more time talking to associates of Hambone Little Tail, who privately witness his unbalanced behavior, or questioning Hambone Little Tail himself directly about his mental lapses. Yes. Okay. So let's hear some headlines about Hambone that did not go far enough. Behind closed doors, Little Tail shows signs of slipping. There you go. A claim about tranny Americans, a claim about tranny Americans puts Little Tail's relentless lying back at the center of 2024. Yes, Little Tail's penchant for unintelligible ramblings back in the spotlight after verbal tirades. How about erratic rants are not just theatrics, they are a profound and growing problem for Hambone Little Tail. Here is Little Tail's delusions seen as accelerating <coughs> lapses described as more common yes uh, here's one on uh, little tails misogyny uh, Here is one more Hambone Little Tail at sixty five, forceful and aggressive, but sometimes confused and addled. Yes. Note that all of these headlines treat signs of Little Tail's questionable mental fitness. 
as themselves being the real news. How often do you see headlines like this? Why don't we see more of them? Yes, Mark Barnacle's eruption at his colleagues has put all this squarely on the table. It is time to take it a lot more seriously before it is too late. All right, I am so happy to see uh, I am finally getting some attention in the mainstream media. But anyway, I need to decide what to do on this fine day, but I think I'm going to touch on one more, one more uh, little rantlet about wolf human conflict in the shithole country of India in one of my incoherent rambling rants completely dissociated from reality. Not sure if it's going to be about tranny wolves or not. <laughs>